People, I feel like I found the holy grail of VPN slash network configurations for the best balance of privacy, security, convenience, and control. And yes, I'm actually this excited um, to share it with you because I will never be leaving it and I feel most of you will really enjoy it too and the perks that it has for your privacy and security. But first, a quick message. While I think communities are great, I found that a lot of privacy communities that I was a part of tended to gravitate around a lot of not very evidence-based discussions. And so we decided to put together our own forum, which is designed from the ground up for thorough privacy and security engagement. All you need is an email to sign up. We have support for several 2FA methods, including YubiKey support. And we have plenty of active members to help out in any questions you have. We actually get a lot of comments from you and emails asking basic questions. And we don't really respond to these because we simply don't have the bandwidth. But we have our communities like our forum, which you can join, and we have lots of intelligent people in our communities to help out. So go ahead and join our forum. It's not just an awesome place for tech lore specific things, but definitely just general privacy and security stuff. And you can ask a lot of great questions and engage in a lot of great content. Join it at discuss.techlore.tech and enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> All right, first, uh, let's set the stage. So we recently covered VPNs and what they do and don't do. Um, our old video is definitely a little too probably optimistic of what they can do. And what it boils down to is is they transfer trust away from your internet service providers to a hopefully, hopefully, more trusted party, which also gives you a small layer of privacy by hiding your IP address on websites. That's mostly about it for most people. Mercy. With that said, I personally can't imagine not using a VPN in my own life, given there's no other easy and convenient way to deal with my ISPs spying on me. Hold that thought, and we're gonna move over to something else. There are DNS block lists. Every device you own connects to a DNS, which is likely your internet service providers, unless you actively changed it. DNS is super important to how the internet works and it makes it readable to people like you, so you can just type in techlore.tech and not have to type in our IP address. A lot of VPNs have their own DNS that they use, which is generally what you want to use as your VPN is hopefully, hopefully, one you trust that will safely handle your DNS requests. The only issue is this protection tends to stop there of whether or not your DNS queries are safe, right? But not quite. Some providers are beginning to roll out block lists, which actively block ad, malware, tracking, and other domains through DNS. These are fantastic because it means your VPN is now filtering through your web traffic and blocking a lot of problematic content in addition to the core perks of your VPN itself. And these are things that you can't normally block, like things that are happening inside of your applications, which you have no control over. So this is really nice, and you can enable this on really any of the main four VPNs that we recommend back here, which all have their own version of this feature. Now, while this is great, I don't think it's perfect. These block lists they use are kind of set in stone for most services with little to no configuration options, maybe with the exception of Robert on Windscribe. So I went on a hunt for a better situation, which gives me a lot more control. Where it led was NextDNS. NextDNS can be set up on all your devices with endless possibilities. There are tons of security perks that come along with using it, and the privacy perks are even cooler. You can add tons of different block lists that all accomplish different things, and any device you use with NextDNS will auto-filter all of this. All these block lists are updated all the time to keep up with the latest changes. This means that all web traffic on your devices will be constantly vetted with or without a VPN. So like, we're not talking about the VPN right now. We will soon though. Now, before we get there, NextDNS has other cool privacy features like the ability to block some of the native tracking that's done on operating systems, like a lot of the domains that Apple devices connect to or Samsung or Amazon devices. You can actually do quite a lot against even first party telemetry data collection. And especially on devices you normally can't do anything for like IoT devices, which is a massive privacy win. To finish, kind of shilling next DNS, there are some parental controls, which I don't know why they call them parental controls. I know that Apple also like treats downtime as a parental control. Adults can have boundaries as well and set up environments for themselves. So I think that this is great for everyone. And then there's also analytics and logs. So you can see quite literally everything your devices connect to all the time. It's a fantastic service that once I discovered, realized there was no living without. But, and oh my God, this was where the journey starts. Using NextDNS alongside a VPN, which is something else I value, proved to be a real challenge. 
So when I started, I was using ProtonVPN and I wanted to use ProtonVPN with NextDNS on an iOS device. But worry not, this issue impacts more than just iOS devices. So um, just because I'm talking about iPhones doesn't mean this is just an Apple issue. This is actually going to be an issue on most devices, including Android. To start with iOS though, you can have two VPN connections simultaneously on iOS, which is pretty unique. One that can be used for something like a VPN and the other for something like NextDNS. Unfortunately though, the NextDNS app moved away from the VPN profile to instead natively hook into Apple's DNS option. And when you're connected to a VPN, iOS prioritizes the DNS of the VPN provider instead of the built-in DNS option. In other words, there's no easy way, if not no way, to use the native Proton app and the native NextDNS app on iOS at the same time and actually use next DNS and not just the VPN's DNS. However, I did find a workaround that was kind of okay. See, AdGuard is an open source app that allows you to set a custom DNS provider inside the app and AdGuard happens to still use that VPN profile configuration. So you can configure next DNS as your custom DNS inside AdGuard alongside any VPN of your choice, in this case, Proton. This did work. I got this set up, though I was pretty disappointed in the real world experience as it was incredibly common for my internet to just cut out. And when that happened, I was unable to connect to Proton VPN unless I enabled and disabled both AdGuard and the VPN in a specific order, which is really inconvenient. And this happened like several times a day where I just didn't have internet and I had to open each app even the widgets aren't great, so like it just wasn't a good situation. It was really finicky, and this was ultimately a workaround solution that was less than ideal. So I wanted to find something better, and I was thinking, why the hell don't more VPNs natively support custom DNS inside their clients, especially across all their clients? So some, some VPNs advertise that they support custom DNS, but it's on like two of their clients, not on all of them, let alone their mobile clients. But there is one, and it was iVPN. So iVPN on all of their clients that I'm aware of support custom DNS providers like NextDNS just natively inside the client. So I downloaded iVPN, went into my settings and just put in my NextDNS link, connected and people, that was it. iVPN even has an option to set a custom DNS on your device when you're not connected to iVPN. So even if you're not using a VPN or if you are using it, you're still connected to NextDNS 24 seven. Meaning I actually completely uninstalled the next DNS client on all devices and was able to 100% just use IVPN for all my needs in one freaking client. This is incredible people for so many reasons. Let's just break this down. First, the amount of privacy and security gain here is incredible. You're protecting your IP address and transferring trust from your ISP to one of the most private open source VPN providers on the market that accepts cash and Monero payments and doesn't even require an email or anything else to register for. But you're also gaining access to the incredible protection of NextDNS, which means that all your websites, your apps, your devices are all being funneled through this incredible firewall that you get to customize that is actively blocking anything you want it to. It's just fantastic. Speaking of, second, configurations like this are normally kind of complex to set up and get going. But this is painfully easy. Just go to IVPN site, get an account, and go to NextDNS's site, make a free account, which should be more than enough for most people. Go ahead and customize NextDNS. I recommend enabling all the security features, and then these are the privacy lists that I enabled. Though this is super personal preference, and I encourage people to experiment with different block lists. Some may be too aggressive and block things you use, um, and some won't. So I encourage you to play around here and find a healthy result for yourself. Then once you do that, you just enter your next DNS DOH URL into IVPN and you're done. It just works. Third, configurations like this are normally messy and don't work well and may even sacrifice privacy or security due to potential instability. They normally require workarounds and don't always work. People, I've been using this configuration now for months and let me tell you, I've almost never had a single issue it feels just the same as connecting to just a standard VPN connection. And you would never know that NextDNS was integrated in the background of this process because there's no NextDNS client anywhere. You're just using IVPN as a central hub for all of this, which makes my inner digital minimalist tingle. <laughs> With all that said, it doesn't quite end here. So let's keep this going. 
See, you can combine this whole behemoth of a configuration with a local firewall program, like Lulu on macOS, Savings Portmaster on Windows and Linux, Lockdown on Android, all of these services can outright block all internet access from apps locally. So this demonstrates the importance of layering up your privacy tools. Your browser has its own tracking protection, I hope, but if something slips, then next DNS in your VPN still has you covered. Several Android runs now come with built-in firewalls that can be combined with the next DNS and VPN configuration, meaning on all devices except iOS, you can combine a local firewall with local tracking protection in your browsers with a network firewall with a VPN to achieve just so much. And by the way, even on iOS, pro tip, for those with unlimited cell plans, you can keep your iPhone disconnected from Wi-Fi and then toggle cell data on and off on a per app basis, which I guess is the closest thing we can get to a repurposed firewall for people really set on blocking internet access per app on iOS devices. For those wondering, no, I have no affiliation here with iVPN or NextDNS. Neither of them are aware I'm making this video, so they're seeing it live when you see it as well. And neither of them have affiliate plans either. There's really no incentive for us to talk about these services. It's just for this configuration that I was chasing, these are the two services that like finally made this possible for me. Now, if you don't like iVPN, you can try to set up this configuration with another VPN that allows custom DNS providers. And if they don't, you can try to use workarounds like I tried, or there are other workarounds, but frankly, nothing I tried beat the experience I had with just iVPN and NextDNS. What I believe is now my new holy grail of configurations on all devices. Again, people, my research isn't going to apply to literally every VPN on the market. Just to reiterate, iVPN supports custom DNS, including DOH on literally all their clients with protections in place to help prevent DNS leaks. But that doesn't mean you can't match this configuration with Winscribe and Control D, and you're going to find things like DNS crypt, pie holes, and other nifty tools. I just struggled to find anything that was this simple and this powerful, but definitely leave comments comments on other configs you all use so we can share different configurations that might work better for different people. And hey, if you learned something today, consider supporting us on Patreon. I mean, shoot, like patreon.com slash techlore. Look at all these beautiful names and you can join them and support these privacy and security videos that are free to the world. So it's really appreciated. Thank you to all of our patrons and thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on Techlore.